Oh, folks. Let me tell you something. Most of the major factions that you see throughout the world in any nation state, no matter what, are merely, well, aggregates, coalitions of individuals who have reason to throw in with a certain group of thugs. But it's complicated because all thugs give and all thugs take. And when you're a thug aligning with thugs, there's always that uh, possibility that the thug that you're aligning with is doing stuff that's counter to what your interests are. And I believe to a certain degree we have that here, although life is complicated, so it's, there's no, very little black and white, but there is a prevailing aggregate of Democrats, DNCers, who I think they recognize the reality that they can't, they were much more open in their support for China before, whereas now they, they try to temper their support for China. But China is, in point of fact, the source of a lot of real economic power for the particular citadelians that find themselves in alignment with the DNC. And uh, many RNCers as well, by the way. So the RNC is kind of a house divided as far as the leadership is concerned. It's got citadelians that... Uh, some of which don't find the Chinese alignment to be nearly as useful. But the DNC does, for a number of factors, find this Chinese alignment incredibly useful for, for a lot of ways. And you'll, well, you'll see that in the, uh, in the course of watching uh, videos on the show. So this is a story from Star Observer, which is celebrating 40 years, setting Australia's LGBT... They say I, they don't say Q. Okay. I have no idea what... Oh, now it's LGBTQI in there. Okay, okay, whatever. So alphabets change all the time. In a devastating blow for local LGBTQI communities, a Hong Kong court this week has refused to recognize same-sex marriages conducted abroad. The applicant's attempt in the present case to achieve completely parity of legal recognition of foreign same-sex marriages and foreign opposite-sex marriages... It's too ambitious. Uh, just Judge Anderson Chow wrote in the judgment. It was only in 1991, after close of two, two decades of advocacy and public debate, that the Hong Kong Legislative Council finally decriminalized private, adult, non-commercial, and consensual homosexual relations. Now, Hong Kong has basically become China, so let's check out LGBTQ, whatever. This just says LGBT. Okay. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered people in the People's Republic of China face legal and social challenges that are not experienced by non-LGBTQ resident, LGBT residents. Oh, yeah. Same-sex sexual activity has been legal in China since 1997. Additionally, in 2001, homosexuality was declassified as a mental illness. Same-sex couples are unable to marry or adopt. And households headed to such by such couples are ineligible for the same legal protections available to heterosexual couples. So hey, they're not going to trunt you down for having the, the sexy sexes, but if you bet down for long-term monogamies... Homosexuality and homoeroticism in China have been documented since ancient times, of course, as it has everywhere else and all the other places. According to certain studies by the University of London, homosexuality was London. Homosexuality was regarded as a normal facet of life in China. Interesting. Now, I don't know. Certain studies. Okay, whenever you see certain studies, okay. I, I don't really believe this was true. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know enough, but uh, my suspicion is like, like in Greece, in ancient Greece, for instance, Homosexuality was considered okay, but only certain types of homosexuality. It was only in certain parameters. It was not given the full status of a heterosexuality. So my, my suspicion is that's probably uh, the case in China. I don't think that they would have allowed uh, 
two men to get married or two women to get married. Uh, uh, so I seriously doubt that, um, and this is just a link to the University of London, so I don't need to go there. So several early Chinese emperors are speculated to have had homosexual. Of course, of course. As is all, all leaders throughout human history, we've had, uh, we've had our suspicions and sometimes uh, direct knowledges of homosexual and or bisexuality amongst our, our illustrious leaders. So nothing is you know, there. With the rapid legalization of same-sex marriage in numerous countries around the world, discussion on the issue has emerged in China. Okay, so you got that, and then you got. Uh, just a little, little backdrop what's going on in Hong Kong right now. A Hong Kong teenager's death becomes a magnet for conspiracies and exposed deep problems in how the city operates. Chan Ying Yam is seen in surveillance footage from September 19th released by the Hong Kong Design Institute. The crowd recalled as tear gas canisters ring down on them and riot police advance on the street. Okay, so how did this... Uh Okay, police fire tear gas to disperse protesters uh, outside a police station. Six weeks later, however, Chan's naked bounty was body. Whoa. Okay. Like many young Hong Kongers, Chan supported the protest movement and took part in many of the large, mar large marches that eventually led the government to withdraw the extradition bill. Okay. But she was never a frontline participant. Had things worked out differently, she would likely not have played a central role in the unrest. One of the many supporters who threw their weight behind the movement but avoided direct clash with police. Okay, so it doesn't really say. She just... Disappeared and showed up dead, floating in the street. And there you go. And then we've got the... Coronavirus, Hong Kong government to give one-time handout of 10,000 uh, Hong Kong dollars to non-permanent residents in need. Wow, taking care of non-permanent residents in need. Yeah. Mulan is reunited with her family. An emissary from the emperor under the leadership of Commander Tong arrives to present Mulan with a new sword while making a personal request that she join the emperor's guard. Where's the Milan ending? Ah, oh, Milan ending. Yes, I meant Milan ending. What happens at the end of Milan? The Huns capture the Emperor and seize the palace while she accepts. Oh, okay, whatever. While she accepts the crest of the Emperor and the sword of Shan Yui as gifts. She politely declines his offer to be his advisor. I'm going somewhere with this. Hold on. Trust me. Instead of coming home with gifts, in the remake, the Emperor's guard and the commander show up and they give her a new sword. And guess what guys? The sword has a new perk that she unlocked. It's the family perk. So she's even stronger. She's like a super, super, super chi lady. So <laughs> chi lady. And that's another big difference between the Milan of 1997 made for a primarily a 1998, primarily for an American audience. And the Milan of 2020, ostensibly made for a Chinese audience. Milan of 1998 was not a superhero, didn't have superpowers, had to use uh, strength, agility, cunning, all kinds of manner of ways to kind of uh, level the playing field. And uh, for the end, she was offered a position of prestige, a leader, a leadership position, an advisor's position. She was going to be entering into the political court. Okay, this is significant. But in this version for the Chinese audience, she was just offered a job as a foot soldier. Com significantly more diminished and uh, lest the Chinese be afraid that a, a woman might have the ability just through nature alone to outdo a man 
we had to make her have superpowers. So I point all this out because the Democrats are wrestling with, they're allowing Trump to frame the debate on China because they've been, until maybe about six to eight months ago, they've been consistently, uh, here, I'm, Anytime, let's just see. Go to 2016 to 2016. When China joined the other two, it kick started. It kick-started waking this. Why does Donald Trump hammer Hillary Clinton on trade? In part because of Bill Clinton's last greatest legislative. Bill Clinton clinched what may be the greatest legislative victory of the president. That afternoon, the House of Representatives voted to award China permanent normal trade relations, effectively backing Beijing's long-in-the-making bid to join the World Trade Organization. This is what they were talking about. Yep. There you go. So they have a long history of uh, supporting China because uh, Disney, China revenue, Disney, China revenue. Last year, Liz, Disney's revenue grew by $4.4 billion, topping $50 billion for the first time. In Hong Kong, Disneyland, visitors from Chinese mainland Hong Kong each still account for about 40% of it. Okay. There you go. Grew by four point fifty billion dollars from China, with every hope of believing that it would be so much more, so much more. This is 2016, 2016. So you see the problem. You see the issue that they're dealing with because they're buddy, they're buddy. They don't like the gays. And they're also extremely patriarchal. That's why Mulan had to be changed into a superhero. Because for the Chinese audience, they could not have a woman actually accomplish all that Mulan accomplished without having some supernatural chi powers, magic bunny powers. They could believe a woman that could dominate men if she had magic bunny powers, but not if she did the 1998 version of Mulan. So say what you will about the 1998 Milan. What I can tell you is that Milan, even though she had her love interest, oh no, heaven forfend that a woman have a love interest. It's weird. That Milan, I would argue, just based on the endings alone, nothing else. Far more of a of a of a powerful feminist statement than uh, than this superhero Milan. I don't know why people believe that. Whatever your philosophical constructs around the notion of a woman being some sort of superhero that completely... St see, the reason why they are superheroes is because for them, it's about the complete and total indulgence of self as the center of the moral awe. Awe. I am woman. I am, I am this thing from, from which I derive all of my power, my source, my energy completely from within me. I must be a superhero that derives my power completely from within me, else a man, uh, a non-progressive or non-whatever your list of crap is, might be given credit for my power, my work. And you end up creating crappy uh, characters. So your ideology matches with the Chinese, except for very different reasons. For yours, you think you're lifting women up. For theirs... They're keeping them in their place, but you're both kind of on the same page. I don't know. I think uh, I think I'll leave it at that. I think that's it. It's uh, quite a challenge for uh, the American DNC left to reconcile its uh, fundamental culture clash with its own beloved golden golden goose that lays the golden eggs well you guys have a great rest of your day somebody has to